Now, what we want to do initially here is talk about the diagnostic value of a good multimeter. There are typically 14 different test functions, and I can alert you to the fact that in a lot of cases, we need to be using most, if not all, of those test functions. If we're watching the digital readout, and you have a loss of voltage supply to whatever component, or you have a signal glitch, you'd have to ask yourself, what is the update rate? Well, it's not very good, two to four times a second. So in reality, it's not likely that you will see a signal dropout by focusing on the digital readout. Now on the right, right hand side of my screen, let's talk about the bar graph update rate. Typically the bar graph update rate is about 40 times a second, usually about 10 times quicker than a digital readout. But more importantly, what we want to emphasize here during this technical presentation is why we need to use the min-max record peak detect mode. The good premium altimeters have, a again, a min-max peak detect record mode that if the signal changes for at least one millisecond, it is recorded into the buffer of the meter, which means essentially that you don't have to babysit the digital readout on the multimeter screen to see maybe a loss of voltage or a signal dropout where it's recorded and we'll dem demonstrate that for you on the problem vehicles as you will see. And we just hit the record button on the min max buttons and we can see stored in the buffer unit that where the voltage may have dropped down to let's say 0 0.04 volts meaning you lost voltage power to whatever. So again, to be, to be more emphatic here, it's real important guys to get acclimated to using the min-max peak detect record mode of your multimeter. You can see on my screen, first setting is for every 100 millivolt equals one amp, and that gives you the zero to 20 amp scale when you're current ramping something like a fuel pump. Then if you have something that pulls more amperage than 20 amps, we can go to the 10 millivolt per division equals one amp. So we can use both those as we do the hands-on as you will see on the car. Now, when you take a look at test equipment, you know, I think most of us, including me, you know, we're guilty sometimes of using a test light. Now, keep in mind, test lights were only designed for a 12-volt circuit. So if you're looking at a 5-volt VREF, that test light is not going to do you any good. Now, let's just stop here for a minute, and let's talk about the open circuit voltage check. Now, if you do an open circuit voltage check, that would mean that you unplugged the component and you were checking with a test light to see if you had a nice bright, bright test light. We want to stipulate here is the fact that when you disconnect the component and essentially you're doing an open voltage check, that test light does not properly load that circuit. In addition, let's go over to the multimeter. If you unplug a component, here again, you are doing an open circuit voltage check. The multimeter with 10 mega ohms impedance built into the multimeter function, you're only pulling 22 microamps. That is not a sufficient load on that circuit. Again, when we're doing an open circuit voltage check. Now on the left hand side of my screen is the LED test light. There's virtually no loading effect. So in summary, what I'm going to say here is the fact that when we use a test light, we don't know how much voltage is there with the test light. When we use the multimeter, we can look at the exact voltage supply. So if, again, if you unplug a component, you're doing an open circuit voltage check. Does it make any difference for using a 12 volt incandescent test light, an LED test light, or a digital multimeter, the loading effect is not there. 